Hello. Hi. Hello, who are you? Hi, my name's Natalie Duncan. Hello, Natalie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So, how's your day been so far, Natalie? It's been really good. Been in a taxi with um, an African man who has offered me a place in a gospel choir, which is good. Based on my credential of having the keyboard in the back, he wants to give me organ lessons. So, so far, it's been so good. Uh, did you give him your number? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fine, it was like 60. <laughs> You've got your debut album coming out next month. Yes. So what's the album called? It's called Devil In Me. So tell us a little bit about it. Um, about the album in, yeah. in a whole, I guess, what I'd say about the album is that it's quite varied. Uh, it's got an, a, a, quite a varied range of songs, I think, because there's some very subtle, quiet songs like Flower, and then that ranges from that to the dubstepy more upbeat one I've got called Pick Me Up Bar. Um, I think the thing that it has in common is obviously just my voice and um, it being quite, I guess it's been described as bluesy and soulful. So. Yeah, your music's quite dark. Do you have a problem talking about it? Do you feel like it's self-explanatory if it was just listen to the songs? I don't think it's self-explanatory. I think it's, it's going to sound pretentious like what people say, but I think it's open to interpretation, Like especially songs like Sky Is Falling because it was obvious that it's obvious that from that lyric itself that I was I felt quite in a hole and it was a bit when like when I first moved to London because um, I'm a depressive person I suffer from depression and it's that that I don't really want to to, to define me but that's the reason I I I'd say listen to my music because if you hear lyrics like devil in me and sky is falling and you know it's it's like that I'm one of those writers instead of me me I could explain the history of depression but you know I don't want to define it by that my outlet is singing and writing and I'm trying my hardest not to sound cheesy like music's in my blood and all that but but like yeah I don't I I don't think there's any song on the album that I've sat down with the intention to think right I'm gonna write this about this and it's gonna be I mean I obviously had the ideas they didn't just literally flow out like like accidentally but it wasn't as strategic as maybe some of the songs I, I could write if I wanted to write commercially. Yeah, yeah. and so you've, you've worked with Goldie, is it? Yeah. And how did, that, how did that relationship come about? Well, I was on the documentary he did a couple of years ago, The Goldie Project. Built a relationship there whilst being on set and filming. And I think because I'd developed my like, the interest from there, from people like Decca and stuff, um, he kept me in mind for vocals for anything he was doing and as his new project is almost the um, What's the word the rev Revival of timeless the old project he did he wanted my voice on that so yeah He asked me I did it and he's a loads of loads of energy to work with nice like, to you, John, Yeah, like definitely definitely. Yeah, and you've also got um track on the new magnetic man album. Yeah Will their track feature in your live show? Probably not my live show, no, but I'll definitely feature it on it for them. So how do you feel that um, people in the audience will record your music, put it on YouTube, that people can download your music illegally? How do you <laughs> feel about that? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I'm not bothered. I mean, yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm not saying do it. I'm just saying, like, it, it's going to happen, you know. And actually, my view on it in reality is that... I don't. I, I think it's not fair. It's unfair for artists not to have their music on places like Spotify. And some artists are massive and don't need it. But for that, it, music should be accessible to anyone. Because for me, it's about people listening to my music. And if they enjoy it enough to want to download it, that makes me happy. You know, if they're paying for it, that's fine. But if they're not, like, they're not. I mean, I have less issues about money and more issues about no one liking my music. So. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's... Do you ever download music illegally? No, I'm, I'm. I don't know any illegal download sites anymore. Uh, so I've got iTunes. It's all yeah. legit. <laughs> who, who do you listen to at the moment? At the moment, um, I've gone back to when I was a youth. At the minute, a bit. I'm got, going through a bit of a Jay Z phase. Listening to a lot of rap, lots, lots of Common, a lot of Nas. The, th the things that are always on my iPod or what I'm always listening to are, would be Radiohead. Um, my favourite band, Pink Floyd, as well, probably. Secondly, and then Elliot Smith. Well, I look forward to hearing your debut album next oh, month. Thank Thanks you. for taking the time out this lunchtime to chat. Thank you. I hope it wasn't really boring. <laughs> it wasn't at all. Wasn't it? Uh -huh.